Welcome back, everybody. We are continuing on our call the spot number 13. We did the women's Survivor Series elimination match members in the previous video, so go back and check that out if you haven't checked that out yet. That means that we are on the men's traditional elimination match competitors. And for Team Raw and Team SmackDown, we're going to do the same thing that we did for the other one. Uh, we're going to do both of them in this one shot in this video. Start from the bottom, go to the top, released, jobber, mid-card, upper mid-card, main event. As far as the people on the teams, if you aren't aware, Team Raw has Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, Jason Jordan, Kurt Angle, and Samoa Joe. Team SmackDown has Bobby Roode, John Cena, that kind of just came out of nowhere, Randy Orton, Shane McMahon, and Shinsuke Nakamura. So, we know for sure all the people that are on this list, unlike to having the guess about the Bailey Page type of situation. So that makes it a little bit easier. We don't have to kind of mess, mess around here. But I think that we're going to disagree in some regards. And we might start off with our disagreements on released because I've got somebody on SmackDown that I don't think that you're going to agree with. I think you're going to agree with Raw. Yeah. My, we Raw then? my Raw is Jason Jordan. Yes, I agree with that. That's something that I don't like because no, I, I, I like, like Jason, Jason Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, I've, he's got... It's it's kind of like an in the moment type thing. Like yeah. At the moment, he is so far below the other four people on that team that you can't justify, even though he does have potential, you can't justify not releasing him over the others. Yeah, the best thing that I always do when it comes to released is if somebody needs to get fired, who's the one that makes this the littlest splash? And mm -hmm. you can't take somebody like, for instance, I'm just going to spoil it. There's no reason why John Cena would be released on Team SmackDown. And for him to be released, say, now, makes less of a splash than it would have been in 2007. That would have been like, what? You're fucking kidding me? You take uh, released of, like, The Undertaker now, he's retired. It is basically a lateral move type of thing. And you release somebody like a James Ellsworth, nobody's really going to care. But when mm -hmm. people are heading towards the top where they already are at the top, they need to stick around, kind of, unless you hate their guts, you know? Yeah. You give me a list of, like, AJ Styles, uh, trying to think of, like, some people that would be, like, all, AJ Styles, Kevin Owens, Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt. I'm releasing Bray Wyatt, you know, even though he's a kind of up there type of guy, you compare him to people that are all towards the top. Eventually somebody has to take it. Jason Jordan's not a guy towards the top right now. He's not even really at intercontinental title level. So unfortunately no. he has to kind of take it, you know, take the L. Yeah. And I, I think like the match itself, I mean, we'll obviously go into more detail when we do the predictions next week, but the match itself has a lot of potential to actually build him. Up. Yeah. A because, lot of potential. Because there is obviously a lot of speculation that he might be the one to turn heel and cost Team Raw and cost Kurt Angle his job. Or but, a potential uh, soul survivor. Oh, I, I mean, that's... I'd say that's unlikely, just due to the fact that the reaction it would likely get from the audience, but uh, it's, it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility. I'm going to put this out there before Raw starts, because... If they hint at it, then people will go, oh, you're only saying that because of that. There's a good chance he could be the sole survivor and that they know that that's going to get a boo. And yeah. that that becomes his heel turn because he's that's like, good. look, I fucking saved Raw and I am the savior of the masses type of thing. And my mm -hmm. dad's the leader of Raw and I saved it. The two of us are fucking, you know, like that kind of a thing. It could happen. It definitely could. I mean, I feel, I mean, I, I don't know about you fully agree with it or not, but Survivor Series is going to make Jason Jordan in one way or another. I think this will be the thing that cat that catapults him forward as opposed to keeps him where he is at the moment. I think there's a really good chance that that could happen, yeah. I think it's unlikely they can really... I mean, at worst, he stays where he is. He stays in the same position that he currently is. But I think there's so much potential for him to go forward in this. Like, maybe if we were to do in this... Look, doing this list a week afterwards, then yeah, he might change his pop up a little bit. Yeah, but I think at the at the moment he just 
he lacks he lacks crowd support. He lacks a certain level of charisma. He's definitely talented in the ring, but not so much to the point that it uh, overestimates everybody else in the ring, like everyone else that's on his team. Uh, so yeah, he just is goes. He just goes due to the fact that there's just better people on his team. I will say this though, my jobber came very close to being released instead of Jason Jordan. I would, I would agree with the same statement there as well. When it comes to released on SmackDown, though, this is where I think we might disagree. I have Shane McMahon. You have Shane McMahon? Mm-hmm. Why, why would you do Shane McMahon? This is kind of a cop-out answer, and... Oh, he's not a wrestler. Is that, that why? A little bit, yeah. He's not a wrestler, so if you can... Because I never actually specified that ever on uh, Call the Spot, that released means 100% gone from the company as opposed to released from their current, like, role. Because you could put people in backstage roles and stuff like that. It is Mm -hmm. a cop-out if you do that, but even if it isn't, I think that we've spent so many years without Shane McMahon that if he was gone from the company again, I'd miss him, but I wouldn't miss him as much as I'd miss the other people. Like that's you that, get that rid of sense, like yeah. Bobby Roode and I'm like, oh, they wasted all this opportunity. You get rid of Randy Orton. I'm like, he, you know, future main event or uh, future main event, future, future main event, <laughs> 12 time world champion. Break, yeah, only, t- only now is he finding a break. <laughs> yeah. to the main event. Well, somebody uh, pointed out earlier on uh, this markout moment, they said, isn't it weird that Randy Orton is the youngest person on Team SmackDown? And I'm like, holy shit. Like, that's weird to think about. I would have thought that it would have been Nakamura Could- or Roode. Combined age of 201 years. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, Shane McMahon, if you do the, the in-ring competition card, he definitely is the one that's the least uh, important. And if you take him off the on-screen roll, too, it sucks, because I like Shane McMahon being on there, but it wouldn't be the end of the world, kind of. Mm-hmm. And it's definitely, like, a, a decent explanation. I got a feeling you're going to go John Cena. No. You'd be wrong with that. Hmm. Really? My rele- no. Damn. My release is Shinsuke Nakamura. Wow. Okay. I did not see that one coming. I, as somebody who watched, who started watching New Japan a few years ago, so I'm still pretty much a newbie, starting to like ingratiate myself into a little bit more into the culture and the understanding of the, the way things were. Um, to watch Shinsuke Nakamura now on WWE is just such a like a drop. It's like it's night and day almost, and I can't I can't fathom it. It well I can't adjust to it. Like somebody that was such a huge revered like megastar in Japan is now just a guy on SmackDown, and that fall has been dramatic. He's got his plus points are the entrance. That's he's obviously <laughs> still still well, he's obviously still skilled in the ring to an extent, but I think it, it's it's quite a, a damn damning thing that he's been with the company a year and a half though, and I don't think he's exceeded past his first night in the company. That's a good point. He had his best match against Sami Zayn in his first match, and ever since then it's been downhill. He hasn't. Like even his, his feud with Samoa Joe was pretty good. The stuff with Bobby Roode was okay. Ever since coming on SmackDown, his feud with Dolph Ziggler was pretty poor. His feud with Jinder Mahal was terrible. Mm, his feud with Baron Corbin went nowhere. Yeah, and he's only had like, like, not say half decent, but good matches with John Cena and Randy Orton. But that's about it on episodes of SmackDown that people won't go back and watch. Um, he's just better off in New Japan. It's not a sense of, like, I don't want to, again, it's not a case of, like, just being released for his own good, but um, I think he's resting on his laurels. I think he's he signed with WWE as a means of protecting his body and earning more money rather than just stay in the hard-hitting style of Japan and as, essentially get overtaken by people like Okada and Naito and Tanahashi and people who are slightly younger and definitely have a lot more potential than he has going forward it's just a case of i don't want him in wwe because i've seen in the last like few months or so how wwe is going to handle him and it's not good it's definitely not the level that i would put him at 
Mm. Definitely loads of people want to see the AJ Styles Nakamura match and obviously that is a big deal but after, beyond that point I can't really think of anybody else I want to see him have a match with maybe Lesnar like it's it's weird because all the matches I want to see him have are the big matches against the big people but they're not tantalising enough for me to want him to stay ahead of everyone else I think the rest of Smackdown's team Smackdown's team is full of like really big names and I think as as much as it pains me to say he's the odd one out out of those ones it's a good argument i i did not see that one coming but that does make sense and for somebody who hasn't watched anything else from uh new japan other than that one aj styles match that he had yeah i don't i don't really know too much about like him being lower than what he used to be and stuff but if that's the case then yeah i can see an argument for being well, disappointed in what they got from him but- it was just the idea that, like, in New Japan, he's a, he's a main event draw. He's somebody that would sell out an entire arena on his own. Yeah. And he just, he just doesn't feel like that anymore. Maybe when he first came on SmackDown, if they would have pushed him a little bit more or put him in some more engaging feuds early on, then maybe I could have seen it. But he's just been reduced to just being another member of the roster too quickly. It's just, it's, it's almost a case of, like, I want him released because I'm so disappointed in the situation. Yeah, but, as opposed just, to, like, disliking him and wanting him to be fired. Yeah, I think he's, on. even even if I do think he's taken the foot off the gas a little bit, I still he's still an excellent wrestler and still, like, a hugely charismatic character. But it's just, it's just too much for a drop for me to appreciate anymore. Hmm. So this is what makes it hard, because if we try to justify releases in like those kind of ways jobber is just straight up jobber (laughs) yeah yeah and i copped out a little bit on this one oh you're copying out on all of these ones yeah it's it's tough but uh jobber to the stars comes to mind and i gotta go kurt angle and randy orton wow well these are gonna be really different at this point (laughs) Randy Orton, in my mind, even though he is the youngest, which is still surprising, is somebody who, I mean, he's a 12 or 13 time world champion already. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need any more world title reigns, and he is at a position in his career where he can lose to everybody who's coming up. Like, he still hasn't had his feud with uh, Kevin Owens, and between the two, Kevin Owens needs to win it. He hasn't had a feud with Nakamura. Nakamura, I think, needs to win it more. He hasn't had a feud with Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode definitely needs to be Randy Orton. Baron Corbin, same thing. Randy Orton doesn't need to win any more feuds anymore. No. And it sucks to have him as a jobber, but eh, that's uh, that's what's difficult. And Kurt Angle, he's kind of the same sort of thing, too. I don't really think there's many people for him to wrestle, and the way that he wrestled at a TLC makes me think that he was very close to being my released actually. And the only way I justified him being jobber over Jason Jordan being released and that kind of thing was if you release Kurt Angle, people are going to be pissed. If you release Jason Jordan, not necessarily. If Kurt Angle still wrestles, but he jobs out to whoever he loses to people will be pissed, but not as much as if they just got rid of him, you know? And there's not anybody really I can think of that Kurt Angle needs to beat ever anymore. If you put him against Kurt, uh, you put Kurt Angle against Triple H for like some control of Raw type of thing, I think Triple H needs to win it and Kurt Angle needs to stop being the GM. If it's not for the uh, control of Raw, Kurt Angle wins because you just you have to have the babyface win. But you put him against Rollins, give the win to Rollins. You give him uh, Reigns against Angle, Reigns wins. You give him Owens, Owens wins. Everybody wins over both of these two, to me. So ultimately, it came down to, like, who do I put for the mid card? Who do I put for the jobber? And I ended up giving it those two. It feels dirty, but... <laughs> it's it's a very good argument. It's definitely, like... I can I can completely understand the reasons for putting them both there. I'll admit that there are, it's kind of a cop out to say jobber to the stars though. If you have like Kurt Angle versus Triple H, oh he's not a jobber, he's fighting Triple H, like uh, you we, know. But well, it's hard to say that most of these people 
would be uh, been like ever present in the main event so it's kind of hard to say that you're gonna have these people losing to Heath Slater or something right like yeah you're not gonna build up Kurt Angle as like his uh very few matches that he has well this one's gonna be against Kurt Hawkins it's not gonna yeah. happen <laughs> Although that'd be yeah. funny if that's uh, how Kurt Hawkins beats, like, he ends his defeated streak. Yeah. Just beats Kurt Angle, and everybody's like, the fuck? I'm hoping he does that against, like, Seth Rollins or something. He just does it out of nowhere, just a roll up. I'd be, I'd be okay with that, you know what? Yeah. Why not? Just get some random-ass win over, like, like a Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. People would go nuts if he beat Roman Reigns like that. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly he'd be, like, the top baby face of the company. Yeah. So Looking who do you got for your it. jobbers? Uh, totally not going to be Angle and Orton. <laughs> yeah, c- completely different. Uh, so SmackDown, I have Shane McMahon. I think uh, Shane... I I like watching Shane's matches. Um, maybe like some people were a bit uh, hit and miss with these ones, but uh, I like... like his punches. Yeah, I mean, his punches, <laughs> are, te- his punches are terrible, but... Um, his matches always feel big. They always feel like a big deal. And he's always going to do something completely insane or ludicrous in each one. So I look forward to them. And like you say, with the Kurt Angle thing, he should, he never has to win any match. I'm still going to enjoy watching them. I'm still going to think, oh, what's going to happen in this uh, match? What, how tall of a structure is he going to fall off this time or something along those lines? And, uh, he never has to win anything. He just he still puts people over because he's such a larger than life personality, and he's he still carries a lot of uh, drawing power on his own. Uh, for Raw, I've gone Finn Balor. The New Japan crowd are not going to be very happy with me. In this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? There. They're not giving them fifteen world titles apiece. <laughs> yeah, just sitting there with the Bullet Club T-shirt, just <laughs> taking taking a break from like browsing squared circle to come watch and <laughs> to come listen to this <laughs> i i heard i heard on this match of because they don't like the new japan <laughs> you so Everybody much better when he was that prince david would be so much better <laughs> yeah um well i'm gonna just go even further with it. i don't like finn Balor, and i don't <laughs> think he's actually that good uh he's not charismatic spoiler I mean, alert he's my mid carter for the same reasons that you're gonna say <laughs> yeah He's not charismatic. He's very poor on the microphone, especially recently. Mm-hmm. Um, he's bland as a baby face. I don't think even, like, he's too popular among, I assume, teenage girls to uh, actually book as a, a heel. He is uh, the uh, winner of the men's Zexius Superstars tournament. <laughs> yeah, but I'm pretty sure a lot of guys who are also wearing their Bullet Club t-shirts are voting on that as well. So. <laughs> Posting links on Squared Circle. <laughs> yeah. Put it this way, they were only... Uh... They were only wearing their Bullet Club t-shirt when they were like looking at the pictures of him. Uh, but you've got... Uh, I, I just um, He's a cruiserweight. He's only £190, so he should be wrestling Enzo Amore every week instead of uh, people at the top of the card. I just think he's been a bit of a disappointment since he came up from NXT. I mean, he was pushed like almost immediately, and then he was unfortunately injured. But at the end of the day, since, since he's come back from the injury, he's just been in very stagnant feuds or pretty much in no feud at all i mean the only feud i can think he's been in since like wrestlemania was is with bray wyatt and that is one of the worst feuds of the year and besides and outside of that he's had matches with like elias and uh, bo dallas and people like that it's just like who cares really like if if Balor was to just sit into the jobber spot again, being almost like a jobber to the stars, but if he was to be defeated each week by some people that I actually cared about, like Braun Strowman or Samoa Joe or Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, I wouldn't bat an eyelid. Yeah, I I have him in the mid card for the same kind of reasons. He's a guy that I think is overrated in all terms. His character is not a character. He's a guy that wears face paint. He's gold yeah. dust without the gold dust character. Or the Usos when they used to wear the face paint. They were the same exact Usos. They just happen to have face paint on. Mm-hmm. And he just has some extended face paint. It goes on his shoulders. And he... he's, he's a marketing machine. He has the leather jackets and the face paint. 
and that little mm-hmm. like uh, hood thing. So he's something that you could use to market to kids to buy their third like Halloween costumes or something along those lines. But beyond that, he's there's very little to shout about. Yeah, he's good in the ring in certain ways, but he is also not somebody who I think I've ever looked at as having the match of the year. No. And he he can put on a decent performance against some different people. And I also like, I can't even tell you what his five moves of doom are. I know his coup de gras. I know the sling blade. He's got the, uh, the uh, cannon drop kick into the corner, which sets up the, the coup de gras. And, and then he's got the like 19, six, 1916. I think it's called that suplex brain buster. I don't even remember that one. That's like his. That used to be his old finisher when he was in New Japan. When he used to be wrestling people that were smaller than him. Hmm. <laughs> I do think he's one of those guys, though. That like, you give him the Intercontinental Title, I buy it. You put him on two of five yeah. live. He's the one of the top stars there for sure. You put him against Brock Lesnar. What the fuck are you thinking? Mm. That makes no sense to me at all. And I know that some people want to see it. And I hope the people that are interested in it, they get as good of a match as that they're hoping for. But there is no comparison. Like, no, and it's not just his size either. It's just like, who's going to be the one that's the bigger star? It's Brock Lesnar. And if like, Le- if Le- if Lesnar beats Braun Strowman and Samoa Joe in under ten minutes, then he shouldn't be he shouldn't be spending less than five against yeah any more than five minutes against Finn Balor. And you put him against uh, AJ Styles and him against Finn Balor. I. I buy Styles putting up more, more of a fight than Balor. But but Finn Balor like beat AJ Styles at TLC. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then was squashed the night after against Kane. Oh, I still don't understand what that's about, but do you give me uh Kane versus Finn Balor in a grand scheme of things? Kane is so much better. Yeah. Uh but he's my mid carter and my other mid carter as far as the uh, SmackDown side of things goes is Shinsuke Nakamura for a lot of the same reasons. I understand that people love him, but I don't quite get why everybody goes so crazy over him. And he is limited on the mic, but that's a language barrier thing. I can't blame him 100% for that. But that does limit him a lot. You can't really build a feud with Shinsuke Nakamura. No. You put him in the ring, he can put on a good match. You try to do a story with him, you end up getting this weird shit with Jinder Mahal, or you get the purely in the ring type of feud like you get with uh the Baron Corbin thing or somebody like Adolf Ziggler has to carry the entire thing and Nakamura just says one or two words and that's it and that gets bothersome after a while so put him in the mid card have him work his way up learn English a little bit better kind of establish more of a character I think it's something that's more like again indicative of the New Japan style is that New Japan he's likely to only have about I don't know just over half a dozen pay-per-view singles matches a year mm. and then the rest of the time he, like the way the new japan do it the, the matches in between in little house shows they do they're always tag team matches essentially all the big stars are always in tag team matches so they don't even have to really build storylines as it were it just goes match to match so that system work seems to work for him and it just isn't translating well yeah but I'm still sticking with released. I'm not even mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, who you got for the other mid card spot? Uh, for, for Raw, both of them, actually, I think. For Raw's mid card, I have Kurt Angle. I will admit, I'm slightly biased. He's my favorite wrestler of all time, and so I am gonna. Obviously, I'm not gonna have ever have him be released from the company now that he's back there. Um, but obviously, I will admit to the fact that he's definitely not as good in the ring as he used to be. Even as much as I try and like hope and pray that he's going to come back and be exactly the same he was in 2003 or whatever. Um, but uh, I think he can still go to an extent. I think you can still have a number of dream matches with him. I'm very excited to hopefully see a Kurt Angle versus Miz match. Because I think they've been building that up nicely and it's actually a a Miz feud with a general manager that can actually have a match to blow it off at the end. I think Angle could win a title again. Maybe not the world title, but I think he could hold an Intercontinental Championship again if he was to moved on to, say, like the um, like an, an all-star appearance type deal as opposed to being on every week as the general manager just to be the 
like a special attraction star for the big pay per views. Hey, if Bret Hart won the US title, <laughs> yeah, and he can still like at least throw German suplexes or put in the ankle lock, and pe- like as soon as you put the ankle lock, people just go absolutely crazy. So like if you can get that reaction by just doing one move, then I think you still deserve to be in the mid card. Um, and for SmackDown, I've gone with Bobby Roode. It's kind of a timing issue at the moment again. I think he's got a lot of potential, but he's only just gotten onto the main roster. His stuff with Dolph Ziggler was, it got better, definitely got a lot better, but it was still lukewarm. I think he definitely has world championship potential, but it's also the age thing. He's 40 years old already. So he's got a few years in WWE at most. So he probably only get one, maybe two title reigns. Um, but he, def- he definitely needs to be a heel when he's doing it as well as a baby face. I don't think he can really ascend past the mid card just because I think his promos as a baby face are forced and not very convincing. Whereas as a heel, he, he just is in his element and he could definitely be a main event guy. Mm-hmm. But just based around like at this moment in time, I just don't buy him as a main eventer. So this is where things get a little bit weird because we both have Samoa Joe and Braun Strowman on Raw, mm-hmm. and we both have John Cena on SmackDown. Yes, but you have uh, I've Bobby got Bird. Bobby Roode, and you've got Randy Orton. Yes. So I uh, I think we should do uh, Raw first. Why not? So okay. I almost had to flip a coin because these guys are close. so close, like. Mm-hmm. I mean, Braun Strowman is probably my favorite act in the company today, and it's been like that for a while, like pretty much all of 2017. Braun Strowman's uh, just kicking ass. He is so much more fun than like anybody else, and that's people that I like too. I mean, like I've unapologetically been a big fan of Dolph Ziggler, but he has been kind of a pain in the ass. I, I used wanted to, to really... just put. I wanted to put Dolph Ziggler on one of these teams anyway, just so I could release him. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I am a big, big fan of Dean Ambrose in a lot of ways, but he has been pretty bland over the past year. I'm huge on some of the people on like the SmackDown side of things. Uh, like you know, there's a lot of different things uh, that are going around in the company, but Braun Strowman is just perpetually fun. Mm-hmm. But I have to give him the upper mid card. And it sucks because I don't want him to not be the main event. But I looked between the two and I said, you know, if I were to be running a wrestling company and you said your five options for world champion are Kurt Angle, Jason Jordan, Finn Balor, Braun Strowman, or Samoa Joe, who do I trust the most to actually deliver on the most consistent basis in all aspects and it's Samoa Joe. He's better on the mic overall, even though I love Braun Strowman just being as simple as he is. You threw me in a garbage truck. <laughs> I think that Strowman, the fact that he's younger, is a huge upset. Uh, upside. Huge, uh, what the hell is the word I was thinking there? I just oh, had so a total it was a huge ups- It was a huge upset when Samoa Joe was born before Braun <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't think of the word that I was thinking of. That is so retarded. Upside, of my opinion. Upside, there you go. Uh, yeah. Huge upside to him. But Samoa Joe has the experience. He's better on the mic overall. He is somebody who is just as believable to win any match as Braun Strowman would be. And that just gives him the slightest, the absolute slightest edge. Edge would be the main eventer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I've, uh, I agree, actually. I've gone with Braun Strowman at the upper mid card and uh, Samoa Joe as the main event. I'm going to try and do the analogy based thing here of like just previous wrestlers. This might be a, like maybe even over again, despite the fact that Braun Strowman has been so immensely fun, but Braun Strowman to me is the next coming of The Undertaker. And I think. He's definitely not as good in the ring at the moment as The Undertaker, but he's obviously he's still quite young and he still can develop and have like the perfect big man matches. I mean, he's already had unbelievable matches with The Big Show that were better than any matches I'd ever thought Big Show would have at this stage in his career. 
So he definitely has that in his locker. Um, but the thing about The Undertaker was that he never had to hold the title all the time. He was still an attraction without the championship. Whereas Samoa Joe is more, to me, like a Stone Cold Steve Austin. The kind of this loudmouth, tough guy, somebody that could beat anybody on his day. And even if he wasn't on his day, he could still just beat that person up and leave them laying. And uh, But he's someone that you build the company around almost. Like yeah. Braun Strowman is your big like attraction act that you can have these like wacky zany feuds with that really don't make any real logical sense but they're still fun because he's like this huge giant tearing through through people like he he could have like a few world championship reigns scattered around them but Samoa Joe is someone that you give the title to sit for six months and just say okay run with it and face everybody beat everybody become like the top star whether you're a baby face or a heel and yeah, he's just, especially on the microphone, he's got a lot of character, a lot of charisma. He's so experienced. He's been everywhere and he's always had a, a huge amount of intensity and a huge amount of character. So he just strikes me as a, a complete com a complete performer, just somebody that has every aspect you need as a world champion. Brian Strowman's your Psycho Sid, Samoa Joe's your Diesel, but better in the ring. Yeah, and... <laughs> better on the mic and better on the mic and just better at everything really actually i'll take kevin nash over uh samoa joe for the mic uh it, i think it depends really i think joe is a bit more like intense and he'll actually try and build like blood into a feud kevin nash will just like laugh and say hey forget about it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're both charismatic in their own way i still go with joe though so with SmackDown, you've got Orton and Cena, which totally should be another WrestleMania main event, right? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I'm looking forward to WrestleMania 35 now. Get Asuka and Charlotte, and then Randy Orton and John Cena. <laughs> and and uh, I'd, I'd, have Cena. I'd have a situation they're both fighting for the 18th world title. <laughs> oh, it could happen, you never know. Yeah. So you've got Rude and Cena. So. That, you, that could be the type of thing where it's like Orton wins like three more title reigns and then it's like they both have. Was Orton at twelve or is he at thirteen? He's at thirteen. He's, could you imagine 13, if like? Yeah. Could you imagine if they do did something where Orton gets seventeen before Cena does? <laughs> I. You know what though? As as much as like it is like a joke. If they had sixteen for Orton and sixteen for Cena and a uh, a vacated world title, and it became these two are the two in the finals of a tournament who gets that seventeenth world title reign. I'd actually be really into it. <laughs> yeah, be, that'd be really huge. And especially if that was like at WrestleMania. Yeah, imagine uh, how I, many imagine how many arcos and attitude adjustments they kick out. <laughs> oh my god, that would just be a straight up hour. <laughs> and I would want John Cena to win. Yeah, so. Uh, but I w it, I went back and forth between these two too because I really really like Bobby Roode and there's a lot of upsides, not upsets. And I eventually had to give him upper mid card though, and it's mostly because he needs to turn heel. Yes, he is a guy that he should have been in WWE years ago. Oh, 100%. and at this point in his career, he should be a main eventer with one or two world titles, but he isn't. And at the moment, it's too much of a jump for him to go turn heel and win a world title on SmackDown than for him to win a mid-card title and then transition back to being a heel and boost his way back up. And it's sort of the thing where it's like, right now, I can't give a world title to Bobby Roode, but I can give one to John Cena. In 2018, if you spend the next couple of months and you get that US title or the Intercontinental title, whichever one he ends up being on, you give that to Bobby Roode, you have him turn heel, you give him a like an uprising, and then eventually at the end, around this time of 2018, he should be a world champion. Mm -hmm. But John Cena's a legend, and yeah. he is just, he, he should always be the main eventer, essentially. If you get some other people in the mix, I can see an argument where you would see, like, if AJ Styles was on this list too, that I would put 
maybe John Cena as the upper mid Carter and AJ Styles as the main eventer, just because he's fresher and more enjoyable in the ring and stuff like that. But John Cena is John Cena. He's just, you put him against Jinder Mahal, the match matters. You put him against the undertaker and people are going to go, wow, the undertaker can lose this. He's John Cena. I don't think you really even need to explain too much more than that. Really? Okay. So when actually making this list, the, the SmackDown men's team was the hardest one for me to decide on in like overall. I think there was a lot of really big stars that really should all be, could all be main eventers in their own way. Maybe not Shane, but the rest could definitely be, be argued as a main event star. But then it came down to deciding the top two. Uh, I ended up going with Cena as my upper mid carder, mm. which is just due to the fact that he's part time. I know when he does come in, it's a huge deal, and he's a obviously, like you say, a legendary star, sixteen time world champion, soon to be seventeen time at the very least, and when he's appearing at the big shows at Spyro Series, SummerSlam, WrestleMania, it's always a huge deal. He probably will win another Royal Rumble to fight for the World Championship again, but it's just the fact that he's not there all the time, and he's not, he's never going to be again, just like as a full-time star. He's dividing his attentions now, as he should do, because he's definitely got enough like of the a portfolio now that he can start branching out into Hollywood and to other ventures. Um, the reason I went with Randy Orton, which surprised even myself when I actually wrote it down, because at the start of 2017, I absolutely hated Randy Orton because I was wondering, why is he winning the Royal Rumble? Why is he fighting for the championship? It doesn't make any sense. There are so many better options than him. And over the past year, I mean, it sounds weird because since then he had a really weird feud with Bray Wyatt that involved, resulted in one of the worst matches of the year at WrestleMania, and then he went straight from that into the never-ending feud with Jinder Mahal. But I started to appreciate the fact that Orton is just really good at what he does, and he can turn it... And when he wants to, I know it's a case of, like, always when he wants to, he can just make, like, magic out of anything. Uh, that he is just a main event star... He's just somebody that inexplicably, whether I think that he's doing really well or he's been really stale or he's he seems to be very like frustrated in the ring or just not putting a lot of his attention in, he always gets a huge reaction. And I think it's almost all down to the RKO. Yeah, that's his, <laughs> that's his secret weapon for sure. And that's, but that's the thing. The RKO is more over than Randy Orton. But the RKO is also more over than John Cena in my mind. Like that one move is just is something that has such a an aura attached to it. Such a like this huge swell of memes and other inf- like bits and pieces and just like the fact that it can be hit out of absolutely nowhere in such a variety of situations. It's the move. It's the move that everyone wants to see. That. Seemingly every wrestler, it's the new stunner. It's the e- move that everybody wants to get hit by and wants to sell in the best way possible. I think he has more world championship reigns left in him. I do agree with you when you said that he should be losing feud with the likes of Kevin, o- Kevin Owens. But I think those feuds should still be in the main event. They should still be for world championships. I think he's just too good. On, like, on his best day, he is just as good, if not better, Maybe not so much in like the athleticism side of things, or he doesn't do as many like big flips or anything like that. But in terms of like just psychology and pacing a match, there's very few that are as good as he is. And I think it's been that way for at least like half a decade, maybe even longer. So I I would just due to the I mean if they were both full time, I would definitely put Cena ahead of Orton. But just because Orton is still here for the long haul, as it were, as it were, yeah, then. I just think that he has a bit more of an standing. Like when I think of who's the top star on SmackDown, I now think Randy Orton. I don't think John Cena. I think AJ Styles. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean if I just Styles, yeah, if I just Styles was on this, then yeah, I, I, yeah. I, would, I would agree with that. But 
based on this list, I'd say those two at the top, baby faces from SmackDown. None and, of us think and, Mojo Rawley. No, no one ever <laughs> thinks about Mojo Rawley. <laughs> anyway. Hey, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal winner. <laughs> yeah, least. I look forward to uh, like Shinsuke Nakamura winning that next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Team SmackDown was hard on this one, though. Yeah, it was that definitely was the, the tough one. I, yeah, I think it was the toughest one. I mean, they're all tough in their own ways, but I, I also like the fact that we have quite a lot of variety on this one compared to the women's ones where we're pretty much like very similar. These ones and, actually have uh, To give you guys a breakdown, my Team SmackDown was... From bottom to top, Shane McMahon, Randy Orton, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Roode, John Cena. Um, my SmackDown one was uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, Shane McMahon, Bobby Roode, John Cena, Randy Orton. So we have no agreements whatsoever when it comes to that. <laughs> We're going to have to fight over that one. Let, and, let the comments section decide which one was yeah. better. Team Raw was, for me, bottom to top, Jason Jordan, Kurt Angle, Finn Balor, Braun Strowman, Samoa Joe. And my one was uh, Jason Jordan, Finn Balor, Kurt Angle, Braun Strowman, Samoa Joe. A lot more uh, cohesion when it comes to that. Just You switch yeah. up uh, Balor and Angle, and that's it. So that's it for our list. Uh, as just mentioned a minute ago, make sure that you leave your comments below on this one and the other one and tell us what your list would be for Raw and SmackDown on the women and the men. And whether you agree, you would disagree, you know, kind of chime in on your opinions about that kind of stuff like that and tell us why you pick the people like that because sometimes there can be a little cop-out answer or there could be a reason why or, hey, maybe you're the type of person that you're like, you know, you want to... I don't know, put main event Shinsuke Nakamura because you absolutely love his entrance and that's the most important thing to you. Or you want to fire uh, Carmella because you're jealous of Big Cass or something. I don't know. But <laughs> that is it for the call to spot, everybody. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you want to be aware of the next thing that is going to be coming your way, which will be the hot tags. And then afterward, we're going to be doing, obviously, the predictions for both NXT TakeOver, War Games, and Survivor Series next week, and then the post-show for both of those on Saturday and Sunday night. The week after that is going to be, if I remember correctly, the mailbag, but it might be the week after that, actually, because we're talking uh, the week after Survivor Series is the whole Thanksgiving type of thing, so might not have a main event that week if I can't think of anything that would be easy to do. And if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below, but... Also, make sure to ring that bell and check off that you want notifications because when we do post new videos, whenever it is, that is how you will be aware of when those new videos come out. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at SmartOutMoment as well. Make sure to follow Callum on Facebook and Twitter, or not Facebook necessarily, but yeah, don't, don't stop me on Facebook, please. <laughs> Looking at you here, Wigmeister fourteen. Yeah, at Wigmeister fourteen on Twitter. I just want to take like the opportunity while we're plugging to apologize to all people that are wearing Bullet Club t-shirts while we're listening to this uh, podcast. <laughs> not not so much for insulting New Japan people, but mainly for your life choices. So, <laughs> <laughs> but if you are as interested in you know, reading more as opposed reading more uh, wrestling talk as opposed to just listening to it, you can check out all the great articles on SmokeoutMoment.com because we have weekly articles going up every week. Funnily enough. This is the weekly articles. <laughs> and if you are aware, unaware of where they are on the website, they're under the website section called weeklies. <laughs> Funny that. I should just change it to monthlies just to piss people off. Be like, this doesn't make any sense. Why are these monthlies? And why is Battle of the Brands different and has NXT and 205 Live instead? <laughs> just some random April Fools yeah. change everything up men's uh wrestling weekly instead of women's wrestling weekly and yeah because men's wrestling doesn't get nearly enough coverage not at all It'd be like all right gabby you need to put down every men's match and it's like oh my god it takes forever but that's uh it for the main event of episode 310 everybody thanks for listening to this we will see you next time this has been another smart out moment and we are being counted out Bye.